Now the ninth day, yes, we had that technical issue worldwide. I think Zoom had an issue that night on the night. Thanks for being patient with us, and uh, we are better prepared today. I think, uh, Coach Kasun. Yes. And it's been a good run, a good run. Oh gosh, I I'm just one of the lucky coaches, I think, to hang out with swimmers like you, journey with you all, hang out with parents, hang out with coaches and try and experience what sport is all about. And yes, on the phys uh, we, we did a fantastic job six days and uh, I wouldn't say the best for last, but every day was so good. And uh, today is a little different. Uh, we are looking at just sports outside of the swimming pool, what it's and life. So, Asha and um, Aranga, Coach Aranga from Ladies College, did a fantastic job. Uh, so, we are very, very privileged to have such good speakers and on the other five days. Thank you guys and look forward to my little session as well as everyone else's. And um, Udesh, our physiotherapist, fantastic guy, who's a physiotherapist of the Royal Rugby Team. He's operating from the NCC and... Uh, it's just a privilege to have him. So over to you, uh, Coach Kasun, and uh, see you soon. Thank you, Julian, sir. So before we start off, I would like everyone to listen to the following instructions. Um, so the chat box, as usual, will be open from 7.30 onwards uh, for questions. And uh, what you can do is when you have a question, even if it's before 7.30, please write it down. So uh, you can uh, submit the question once the chat box is open. And uh, please do not misuse the chat box. You know what will happen. Um, I would like to inform everyone to switch off their video modes if it's on. And uh, also, I, I would like to let you know, uh, we, on the conclusion of today's session, at the end, we will have uh, Sri Lanka's, one of the most popular singers performing for us. So stay till the end. Um, stay for the question and answer session. And then you know, for the performance as well. And then ultimately we will announce all the winners uh, for today's question as well. Okay. First up, we have, we have Udesh Pereira to present to you on injury prevention in swimming. Udesh is a physi physiotherapist attached to the Rainbow Swimming Academy. He has a BSc in physiotherapy from the University of Colombo. He is certified in aquatic and manual therapy, sports taping and strapping, dry needling, dynamic taping, and clinical ergonomics. The stage is yours, Udesh. Thank you, Kasun. Good evening, all of you. Hope all of you are doing well and safe. Actually, no need to introduce myself. Kasun did it better than me. Anyway, I'm Udesh, working as a physiotherapist with rainbow swimmers and related injuries from 2015 after my graduation in physiotherapy. Today, my topic is injury prevention in swimming. First of all, I will explain what I'm going to discuss with you in next 20 minutes. We'll start with, are swimmers vulnerable to get injured? And what are common injuries in swimming? Causes for these injuries? And what we can do for injury prevention? And finally, injury prevention with performance enhancement. First, we will discuss are swimmers vulnerable to get injured. When we consider on sports, we can divide them into contact and non-contact sports. In basketball, rugby, football, hockey, players physically contact with other players during sporting activities. When contact with another player, with sporting equipment or with playing surface, they are in high risk to have a contact injury. But in swimming, no need to contact with anyone and doing it a very smooth water surface. But swimmers still have injuries and they're getting injured. Why? Most of swimming related injuries are overuse injuries, training related injuries or athlete management related injuries. All swimmers have to follow a proper training program according to instruction from coaches and have to have good discipline to maintain it for injury prevention purpose. Okay, now we move into 
common injuries. First one, summa shoulder. Summa shoulder is a common term to describe group of injuries related to shoulder and swimming movements. I'm not going to describe any medical term or pathologies here. As an injury, summa shoulder is common with all strokes. Origin of many injuries regarding to the shoulder joint because of lack of mobility and flexibility in your shoulder and restrictions of your shoulder blade movements on rib cage or surrounding muscle tightness. If you have tight chest muscles, tight shoulder muscles, tight upper back muscles, your posture is like number two picture in this slide. It's a really bad posture for a swimmer. Okay, we can do a small activity to check this bad posture, how this bad posture affect on your shoulder movements. Please stand up for a minute for me or sit properly and nicely and keep your trunk straight. Push your chest up and lift your chin up a little bit. Stand properly as third pitch or sit properly with straight trunk. And now straight, lift your arm without bending your elbow from front like this. Put down with same good posture, try to lift it from sides. Put down. Okay, now slouch your upper back. Slouch your upper back and make round your shoulders as Second picture, second picture in this slide. And with this bad posture, try to lift your arm up again, up to maximum. Okay, put down. And with this posture, try to lift it from sides as well. How you feel? Do you feel that you can't lift arm completely and it's really uncomfortable with bad posture? Imagine you are with this kind of tight muscles and same bad posture, but still trying to swim as a normal person. You have to have 100% mobility in your shoulder joint, shoulder blade movements and neck rotation for swim efficiently. When you swim with this bad posture, internal structures of your shoulder joint get compressed and easily damaged. That's what happened in swimmer shoulder. Okay. Next injury, pain in between upper back, in between your shoulder blades actually. This is very common with fly and breast proximus. Main causes for this are lack of strength and endurance in upper back muscles and lack of recovery with self massage. We can't consider this as an injury, but it's a severe muscle tightness and a very common issue. This severe tight severe muscle tightness can origin a pain itself. Okay, let's move into next common injury, knee pain. There are lots of injuries related to knee joint, but most of swimmers have knee meniscus damage or knee meniscus compression. Meniscus is a C-shaped cartilage which lies in between your main two knee joint bones. You can see in this big picture with blue color, meniscus works as a shock absorber in your knee joint. This knee meniscus injury is common with breast strokers and mostly in female swimmers. Breast stroke action creates more compression on your knee joint and meniscus. If your thigh and leg muscles are not strong enough to bear that force and if muscles do not provide much support to knee joint during breast stroke movement, you have extra pressure on your knee joint. and your meniscus get damaged. If you want to be a good breast stroker, you have to follow proper lower body strengthening program for sure. Okay, let's move into next common injury, low back pain. This is also common with all strokes and mostly with female swimmers. There are lots of pathologies for low back pain also, but main causes for swimmers low back pain now lack of muscle strength in core muscles, lack of mobility and flexibility, and lack of stability of your core muscles and core structure. Core muscle means both abdominals, abs and back muscles. Some swimmers have enough strength in core muscles, but not much stability in core muscles and core structure. Stability means ability to maintain and maintain control joint movements with coordination. I will explain this with an example later. Okay, let's move into last common injury. 
ankle pain. Swimmers have ankle pain due to two main reasons. One is land training errors. Most of swimmers run long distances without wearing proper running shoes on hard surface for endurance training. Then more impact on your ankle and get injured. Next reason is keeping ankle too tight when kicking. This is common with fresh young swimmers. Okay, we discussed uh, on common swimming related injuries. Most of these injuries due to few main reasons. Tight muscles in tight muscles and lack of flexibility, limited range of joint movements and lack of muscle strength and stability. Let's discuss what we can do for correct them and injury prevention. First one, use correct swimming technique. I think you followed swimming technique and biomechanics earlier. Follow all instructions you are coach given on swimming biomechanics. Check with him again and again. Do a video analysis if needed and make sure you are on right pathway. Second injury prevention method is following a proper all included dry land program. I know you are already following a dry land program. Check what you are doing already. Are you doing it properly? What you have missed and what else you can add. Okay. There are three main injury prevention components should be included into dry land program. Strengthening training, flexibility training and mobility training. First, we will discuss a bit on strengthening component. I think you had a super session on strengthening a few days before. To be a good swimmer and train without injuries, you have to have enough strength in your swimming related muscles. When we consider on strength and training, it has to be sports specific. You are training to be a good swimmer, not to be a fitness model, bodybuilder or a rugby right. Then your strength and training should be swimming specific. Next point, we have to train both large and small muscle groups. Most of time we focus only on large muscles and neglect small muscles. As an example, when we do exercises for upper body, we train large muscles like deltoid, pec, lats, which are helpful for pushing and pulling activities. But we neglect small muscles, small rotator cuff muscles, which are responsible for shoulder rotation. If these small muscles are weak, they get injured easily. So we have to strengthen both small and large muscles. And in strengthening training, we have to include stability exercises also. Strength and stability is two different kinds of things. I explained stability earlier also. Stability means ability to maintain and control joint movements with coordination. In simple term, ability to hold one part of your body in stable while moving other part. Suma should have optimum stability because you move arms and legs but keep trunk stable in swimming. The second picture is a good example for core stability exercises. She's doing squat on a bosu ball. Squatting is mainly a strengthening exercise for our lower body. But if we do it on an unstable surface like a bosu ball, it works as a strengthening exercise for our lower body and as a core stability exercise at the same time. So we have to include both strengthening and stability exercises into land training program in injury prevention purpose. Okay. Next injury prevention strategy is flexibility and stretching. Flexibility means ability to stretch a muscle into optimum length. There are two main types of stretching methods we use in swimming. Static stretching and dynamic stretching. In static stretching, we have to stretch a muscle into optimum length and hold it there for 20 to 30 seconds. In dynamic stretching, no need to hold in optimum length, but you have to move up to full range and move up and down for few times. We have to do stretching exercises for all muscle groups in our body. Usually we can do dynamic stretching exercises before training as a preparation for training. We should dynamically stretch all muscle groups we are planning to work on. We have to do static exercises, static stretching exercises after training. And it will take around 8 to 10 minutes. 
we have to follow this routine for each training session for injury prevention purpose dynamic stretching before training static stretching after training okay now we move into next injury prevention strategy foam rolling it's a kind of self massage technique doing with foam roller tennis ball and using your own body weight we can use foam roller over large areas like lower back thighs and legs much better and effective if you use tennis ball over upper back middle back chest and shoulder area that small areas and we have to self massage around 2 minutes each area 2 minutes each area that means we have to foam roll front part of our thigh for 2 minutes hamstring area for another 2 minutes and much better if we can foam roll after training or as a separate foam rolling session okay last main injury prevention tool is mobility training in simple term mobility means ability to move joints into full range you must should have sufficient mobility on shoulder shoulder blade movements neck and upper back mobility and hip mobility to improve mobility we have to do mobility drills same as we are working on strengthening stroke collection drills you can see few mobility drills in this slide and you can see few mobility drills i want to include a video but because of the zoom session i didn't include any video and then let's move and discuss and what we can do and what we focused on up to now we discussed on stretching exercises strengthening exercises flexibility and mobility we mentioned here few words then you can google it and have a good idea on stretching exercises dynamic stretching foam rolling and self massage mobility drills for foam rolling and this kind of and please go through this and i'll keep this slide for few seconds okay as summary we do stretching and foam rolling for relax and stretch muscles and mobility drills for improve movements now i will explain how to combine all three main three injury prevention components what we discussed we can do dynamic stretching before training and land training static stretching after swimming and land training we are doing strengthening exercises in our land training that's it's included to our land training and can include foam rolling and mobility drills into land training session or can do it as a separate session if you do it as a separate session you can do separate one hour session foam rolling with massage mobility drills and static stretching exercises if you can do two recovery sessions like this per week you can be an injury free swimmer for sure okay i think you go through this slide then we can move into final part of our discussion this section is mainly for senior swimmers elite swimmers and coaches in this part we will discuss bit on injury prevention and performance enhancement when we training up to elite level most of injury prevention methods use same as performance enhancement techniques in sports we are planning to discuss three injury prevention and performance enhancement techniques in uh, this slide first one reflective performance reset 3d resistance and how to challenge your core with two types of resistance first one reflective performance reset reflective performance reset is a method to stimulate and activate muscles before start training when we stimulate a muscle we make sure that muscle is working properly and effectively according to this method there are special points on our body for each muscle shown in as shown in this picture for example point for your glute muscle which lies on your 
back of your head, the area called occiput. In this method, we should rub over that point for few seconds before we start training to activate glute muscle. When we activate glute muscle, we can achieve more efficient kicking mechanism and reduce risk of injuries cause related muscles are working properly. Okay, we move into next injury prevention and performance enhancement technique. It's 3D resistance. In this method, we use resistance for selected movement in different angles and different planes. In this picture, you can see doing pulling movement with only one direction, with one resistance. But we can apply few more resistance band in different angles and different planes for same movement. This is a method for challenge muscle efficiency in different angles at the same time. Okay, last injury prevention and performance enhancement technique is balance, challenge your balance and stability with resistance band. I will give two examples for this method. One example for this method is can use two types of resistance at same time for selected movement. As first picture, we can do bicep curl with barbell and mount a resistance band to make it more challengeable. Another example we can do is resistance training on an unstable surface. As second picture, we can do pulling activities with hip area on gym ball. These are only few examples for injury prevention with performance enhancement. And that's all for injury prevention methods. I try to touch all points regarding to injury prevention in swimming. If we go back into last 20 minutes as review, today we discussed on are swimmers vulnerable to get injured and what are common injuries in swimming. Under this topic, we discussed on swimmer's shoulder, and swimmers upper back pain, low back pain, knee meniscus injury and ankle injury. And we discuss causes for each injury. And after that, what we can do for injury prevention. Under this, we discuss few strategies, strengthening training, stability training, foam rolling and self massage, stretching methods, static stretching and dynamic stretching. And one new thing, mobility drills, and after, finally, we discussed injury prevention with performance enhancement. Under this topic, we discussed reflective performance reset, how to activate muscles and 3D resistance, and how to challenge our core with two types of resistance. Actually, we can't go through much depth through a Zoom session without any demonstration and with limited time frame. Hope you all got something from that. And Wish you all the very best uh, and thank you. Kasun, you can take the screen. Thank you, Desh, uh, for that uh, informative uh, presentation and uh, uh, for letting us know, uh, giving us the details of, uh, I think it was a brief uh, introduction, but uh, I think in the long run, it will be helpful for everyone. Okay. So if anyone has questions on what Udesh uh, spoke about, uh, you can always uh, put it on the chat box once the chat box is open and then uh, at the end of the session we can uh, look into that right next up next up is uh, one second I'll just share the screen first okay next up is Mr. Julian Bowling to speak on swimmer parent and 3D coaching I'm sure all of you know about the Lankan swimming legend, but I will give a brief introduction. Julian Bowling is the head coach and director of Rainbow Swimming Academy. He is a medal winning swimmer who has represented Sri Lanka at numerous international competitions. He has won 15, yes, 15 gold medals for Sri Lanka at the South Asian Games between 1984 and 1991. He is a three time Olympian. And Mr. Bowling was honored in 1998 by being awarded the Deshabandhu. Coach Julian, over to you. Actually, sorry, Deshabandhu Julian, over to you. Hello. Thank you, Coach Kasun. A quick one. Um, this is my clock. I've been strictly given um, 
15 minutes. I have about 11 slides, but because you mentioned Desh Bandhu, I must tell you, I was studying in America. And after my studies, when I came back to Sri Lanka, many years later, I suddenly saw a scroll kept inside the closet and I pulled it out and I saw Desh Bandhu written. I was like, what is this? So I asked my mother what it was. And they said, you know what? When you were abroad, you awarded this and your brother went and picked it up. So okay, that, that's how I found out that I was a Desh Bandhu. But okay, more into the topic. Um, parents, um, again, welcome. I think uh, we started the week with a lot of uh, coach. Uh, the, the, the lectures are on the physical side, whether it's our stroke mechanics and strength training. Then we came into what we call long-term development of an athlete to uh, life after an athlete. Elanga's speech was life as an athlete. And I think yeah, in this talk, we, there's a third side to life, third side to sport. So one is the physical. One is the, the mental focus to get things done. And the third one is what you call the relation of the spirit, the heart how we become a good person. Um, the topic here is sports for all, sports for life. If you can change that to all of us saying swim for all, swim for life. As uh, it was mentioned midweek uh, in the long-term development of an athlete, uh, Coach Shehan said how at age, the younger age groups we have so many, 400 swimmers in a heat. Come under 20, there is only two heats, sometimes only one. So dear parents, we got to ask this question. A lot of your swimmers might be the younger kids uh, who are in the sport. Do you want your child in the sport towards the later stage of their life? And should we do sport in a way that we will enjoy it in such a way that we will do sport for life? Next slide, please. So this is uh, a course that we follow, three-dimensional, looking at the clock. Um, so, like I said at the beginning, at the bottom of the pyramid, you have the fundamentals, that's the body, the physicality, so injury prevention, all that comes into um, that element, which is very, very important. That's our main sport. That's a chunk of the pyramid. Then in sport, we have uh, what you call the psychology. Psychology is how you focus your mind to performance, how you focus your mind. So, so the body and the mind comes together. So that's called the second dimension. And the third dimension is body, mind, and spirit, holism. So it's a whole life person that we are very interested in uh, coaching. So when you put all three together, I think, you know what? If you coach in all three elements, this is important for coaches. We will have a faster swimmer. Next slide, please. Okay, so in, in, in following this three-dimensional course, uh, a lot of our Sri Lankan coaches, a lot of uh, the coaches, I guess all of them who lectured here have followed or is following, I'm still following the course, three-dimensional coaching. At one point, it said 70% of the kids quit sport by age 13. This is researched in America. I think in Sri Lanka, we are looking at a greater number, a greater percentage. America is number one in the Olympics. They're number one when it comes to the universities and the sports curriculum. Six or seven, seven, I think, out of the 10 biggest stadiums in the world are owned by universities in America, 100,000 seaters. And they're full of spectators. The professional sport is huge. But you still have 70% of the children stopping sport. Because they are so competitive, they forget... Uh, the happier side of life. And in that first picture, you can see that a little girl with her hands on the face. Obviously not. And all those little pictures show a different situation where there is some kind of sadness, an argument, disappointment. And it's important that we tackle children and coach our kids, you kids who are out there, uh, in a way that, you know, we don't see, we don't need to experience any of those pictures. And hopefully, children can then carry on doing sport throughout their schooling career and hopefully sports for life. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the golf face. Ah, it's the Visakians, I think, mainly. And there was a sea swim practice. Yeah. So forget the picture. There is a word called transactional and transformational. Dear parents, um, if you bring your child 
to a pool and tell the coach, please help my child swim faster and coach my child, it becomes a transaction. A transaction is also when we go to a shop, go to a supermarket and buy something. It's an exchange. And there is that element. And the second word is called transfer. Mational. This is where when we coach swimmers, even for being the best they can be, we have a priority as coaches to help kids become better people. This is a transformation of the person. And they also say some, when you coach on the three-dimensional, the performance also goes back. The All Blacks have a very powerful approach to help becoming, making their players the best in the world. They say good men make better Blacks, All Blacks. Good men, good fathers. So good individuals. So this is the fact that we want to talk about the transformation of do we become a better person through sport. Next slide, please. So when we studied this, uh, there's a book out called Transformational Coaching. And in that, uh, the author had a purpose statement uh, that he has used. And you know what? I carbon copied that statement. I thought it was so good. So if a parent comes and asks a coach, look, you're going to help my child train faster, swim faster. What values are you going to teach my child? And hopefully we should all have an answer. And in this purpose statement, this is for young swimmers, old swimmers. Why we want to coach you is to help you, boys and girls, swimmers, to become men and women, men and women, that's when you grow up, of empathy and integrity. And I looked at these two words, empathy and integrity. Empathy is when somebody is down, a friend of yours is feeling down. It can be in school. It can be at home, it can be at the pool, it can be at a competition. When you see somebody down and you feel for that person and you go and give that person a helping hand, then you're a person of empathy. Wouldn't it be nice if you all become them? I see at a lot of meets, the winning swimmer giving the hand to a swimmer who has come last in the race or not come first. That's a hand of empathy. Integrity. Integrity. Integrity is, I think, very important as swimmers, as students, as you grow up in age. There are times in life where we have to sometimes make the right choice. Our friends might tell us to do something that is not right. So one thing is we must know what is right and then stand up for what it is. And in standing up, sometimes you can be alone. But if you can become a man or a woman of empathy and integrity, you will be, in a, you will be a person, says afterwards, lead, we lead. You don't have to be a fast swimmer to lead. You don't have to be an Olympian to lead. You will be responsible and you can change the world for good. So this is our st purpose statement that we have at Rainbows. And um, I know uh, when you do the three-dimensional co uh, course, at the end of it, it asks all the coaches, to write down their purpose statement as to why they coach. In this statement, it talks nothing about performance. So uh, it talks about being a good person. It doesn't mean to say we are now going to train our athletes to be the best they can, but this is the priority. Next slide, please. Okay, so I'm not going to read all this, but it says uh, daddies, mummies, especially dads who are in business, they say rule number one in business is to know your customer. And in the video game industry, the video game industry has studied the mindset of children. There are these little points that they knew children like. They like lots of action. Don't you kids? Be awesome as I must say, not kids. Freedom to experiment. Try new things out. Try a new stroke out. Try a new distance out. Try a new technique out. Competition without exclusion. A lot of times you see in competition, people are kept out. Nobody should be kept out. At Visaka, I know Coach Kasun recognized the reserves who contributed to the team. They were excluded from swimming, but they were included in the recognition. Social connection. We love to make friends with our co-players, co-swimmers. 
Sometimes in swimming within a team, there is a, the rich and the poor can be the English speaking and the singular speaking, or they can be dividing themselves. So that's important that we become co-players. We love, children love rules. Children love some control. Too much control is not good. So, but they love to be in it. So that's why in a sporting field, we have controls, rules to follow. And the third, the last one is very important, dear parents. Guess why the gaming industry is so popular? No parent critiquing their every move. So if we coaches can be half of this, coaches and parents, imagine where our children, we can have those 400 swimmers at the under 19 or group one level competing. Next slide, please. Okay, so in the, by studying and researching a little bit on this, it said this, this is very important. These are young kids. Look at the smiles. That's how we all start. You go to an inter-house meet, you see the most amount of fun. Most amount of fun is that inter-house meet. And you go to a school level meet, and the fun is a little less. The cheering is a little less. You go to a national meet, international is even less. And this statement says nine out of 10 children, all you guys, most of you, nine out of 10 say, Fun is the main reason that you like to be involved in sport, not the winning. And I'll come to that a little later. So remember, fun is the big reason. Not that we go to the pool and just have a good time. But we must make sure that sport is fun. Then we will see our swimmers staying in the sport. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is a little technical again, like the, um, the two words we had before, the transactional, transformational, so directly or indirectly involved in the same here. Intrinsic versus extrinsic. Extrinsic motivation is motivated to perform an activity to earn a reward or avoid punishment. Ooh, we try to do things to get that trophy. We try to do swimming to be in the A team. We try to we compete in swimming because we want to get into the national team. And there is nothing wrong in that. Those are things we all like. We all like rewards. We all like to avoid punishment. But think about the rewards. We all love them. But guess who likes rewards more? Children or parents? Dear children, you are there with your mom and dad. Ask them. Have a little chat at home today. And I see who likes performance more and research says parents prefer the rewards over children children again goes back to the previous slide they want to have fun so intrinsic motivation what motivates if you are motivated to be in a sport to perform an activity that's a sport for its own sake and personal rewards that the swimmer likes to be part of the team the swimmer is respected by the coach. The swimmer is encouraged by parents. So which reason is the bigger reason we do sport? Is it because we want to win? Most adults prefer the winning. Children are saying we prefer fun. Then it's up to us adults, coaches and parents to look at it from the child's point of view. And like the mo mobile business, the gaming industry, we need to start thinking about children and saying, you know what, we want to help you out. So the intrinsic value has to be the bigger reason. And if it is a bigger reason, whether it's your schoolwork, whether it's your sport, and later on in life, mom and dads who are working, if the intrinsic values are the bigger reason you do something, you are going to enjoy it and do better. Next slide, please. Okay, so something that we do at Rainbows, um, I learned this from the book. We have something that we help children as much as we want to help them with being, um, I just want to share these 10 words, 10 important words. We are helping children to say the word please. We are helping children to say the word thank you. That's three words. We are asking and helping children to use the word I love you. And then all the swimmers go, wow, coach, thank you. Now I can go to, uh, a boy would think. There is Susan on the other side. Coach told me to go and tell her I love her. 
it's not that we are talking about. It's about going to the parents and saying, Mom, Dad, I love you. I told customers, it's, I've lost both my mom and dad. And it's unfortunate that if someone, some of us say that naturally, a lot of us don't like to use the word, I love you to our parents. But if somebody told me to say that, I would have been saying that to my mom and dad. But it's my turn is over. I lost it. So we are trying to help kids use those words in supporting parents. And here's another one, parents, that we are helping kids over the weekend, especially. We are asking kids to go home and say, hey, mom, dad, you've done so much this week. Can I help you? Can I help you with something at home? So just, just in glance with these... Um, my 15 minutes is almost over. Give me two minutes. Next slide, please. So it was quickly researched, dear parents. I've done it in Sri Lanka. I was at an international school and I asked the swimmers, how many of your parents talk about the event, talk about training while driving home? And all the, parents, the children put their hands up. All of them. I said, how many of you don't want your parents to speak about the sport or the event and the hands stayed up continue to stay up they said i don't like mom and dad talking to me about this event children your mother and father are next to you this is something we have put a rule saying children have the right now to tell mom and dad when they talk about the sport on the way home driving you can go Shh, please use the word please be nice to them. Also, it was research. They asked children, who do they like to watch? Who do they like to watch them play? Who do they want at, the, at an event, sporting event? And guess what the most frequent or common answer was? Grandparents. Your Archisia, your grandparents, they are happy to see you compete. Whether you come first or last or third, they, it doesn't matter to them. Dear parents, if you can become like a grandparent and reinforce your children that you love them irrespective of winning or losing, you know what? They'd want you at the competition. Next slide, please. So finally, uh, this is something that we, uh, we've asked. We, in a, we started uh, this year at Rainbows and I think for coaches outside of Rainbows also can consider this. We ask children what they want. No more us telling children what they want, that we want from them. No more getting parents to tell them what parents want from them. So we ask children what they want. This is so important. And for example, if when a coach sits with a swimmer at the beginning of this year, they talk to them and said, look, what is it that you want? And every swimmer will have something. They'll say, you know what? I don't want any competition. I just love being part of this team. Well, that's what the children want. And then that has to be then conveyed to the parents. A child might say, look, coach, I'd like to get into the A team of the school relay team. Or I'd like to be in the finals at the age groups. Then you can quantify speed. And see, look, to do that, what speed you do, would you have to go? And you will say, maybe this is the speed I need to go to achieve this target. And then you can make a training plan. And then what happens is we want the coach, the child, to take that training plan that the child and the coach has made up for the child, go to the parents and say, this is my plan. So this is very important that we ask kids. Never force them to do anything. Ask them why. What is it that they want? And I'm sure we can have those 400 swimmers competing at the group one stage, at the Sri Lanka schools meet, at the age group meet, at nationals. And you know what? They're going to take sports for life. Thank you very much. Over to you, Coach Kasim. Thank you, Julian, sir, for that uh, encouraging speech. I think uh, a lot of parents uh, would have got a lot out of it. Okay, now uh, we move on to another legend in his particular field. Uh, so we have uh, Mr. Shambli Nawaz, who is the rugby head coach at St. Thomas College to speak a few words. 
Shamli was educated at Isipatana College and played for the Green Shirts in 1996 and 1997 before joining before join, joining Havelocks and then he moved over to CRNFC. He was an automatic choice for the National Sevens outfit for many tours. His coaching stint started at Patana with the junior outfit. He also looked after the junior national team's forwards unit before crossing over to Zaira College in 2013. He successfully managed to bring the 38th the 38th ranked team from Division 2 to Division 1, making them one of the top 10 school schools teams in Sri Lanka. After five fruitful years, he joined the Boys by the Sea as the head coach. Thank you, Coach Shamli. Over to you. Hi, Kishore. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I think Julian touched uh, most of the stuff that I was wanted to talk today. But I, I will go through again. Uh, I think uh, uh, athletes, uh, you all had a good session for five or six days and uh, I was also in and out of these sessions. Uh, like Julian showed you the three-dimensional uh, view. When we talk about 3D athlete development, these athletes have short-term goals and long-term goals. Mostly, uh, they go into short-term goals in Sri Lanka. We have seen lot of athletes going in for short term goals. Excuse me, excuse me, Coach Shamli, can you be slightly louder, please? Yes. Hello. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, they're, they're going into short term goals. So when you go into short term goals, a more eccentric uh, motivation is used by coaches, parents. So they push the athlete to go and win certain meets and certain events and they cherish like Julian said they will want to show off that uh, trophy or the rewards but I think it's going to get them deviated from the real goal that the long-term goal that they will have in life so this 3d coaching has developed coaches to see that long-term picture creating better athletes and better human beings so we, we are telling most of the coaches not to go in for short-term goals now. So think about long-term development. And long-term goals are driven by passion. So like Julian said, it, it is fun. So when an athlete starts enjoying the sport, any kind of sport, the result will be enormous. You will, you can't, you will find huge results like... There is plenty of coaches in Sri Lanka who has the first dimension really well studied. They have the experience. They have the second dimension of motivating. They do extrinsic motivation. They punish and they get the athlete to work, but they never get that goal of a long-term plan. So I think this 3D coaching helped us a lot. I want to thank Julian for getting me into this. Because after I got into this 3D coaching, I have transformed myself from a different coach that sees the longer term picture. And certain players have told me that they are still thinking about what I taught to them after they left the sport even after school. So I think most of the coaches need to really think about this 3d development of athletes even athletes if they have a longer uh, goal like to enjoy the sport whatever sport they get involved if they enjoyed it with a passion then it drives you to the area that like julian mentioned the under 19s will not have a, a two heats there will be 10 to 15 heats in under 19 also so at, now there is a situation certain days uh, athletes will be tired and this thing but they need to maintain that discipline to go and tell the coach that i am feeling tired so building relationship with the coach is very important for the athletes going forward most of the uh, athletes or uh, the sportsmen is fearing the coach that has to go off and you have to have a very close relationship with your coaches. Uh, that will help. Now, 
now there are a certain uh, i saw some speaker saying how they study so if a athlete studies the whole night and he has a se training session in the morning he has to have a way of communicating that he was up till one o'clock or 12 o'clock studying to the coach otherwise the coach will not know this and the coach will go on on his coaching role so that will definitely have a bad impact on the long term goal so it is a duty of these athletes and coaches to have this relationship so that is a very important thing in 3d coaching that i see that will change a whole lot of uh, areas in the system so uh, then there is this relationship with build up in the team as athletes now i'm talking to athletes so uh, there can be now uh, in the training coaching we know that uh, if there are some good athletes and they are they think that they are really good but if they tend to go and help a person in a younger age who is a bit struggling with their techniques and stuff i think the top athlete will improve more by going and helping so like swimming it's an individual thing but i think the team expect can come in now the sport that i coach is rugby so when i got this into the rugby team we have a system called the body system so in this body system it's like you do your work and you try to help whoever is in need of help so i think that is taking this team uh, unit forward so for athletes i think it's very important that you start helping each other even at swimming you can do that as a team it's very important you be a team person for a long term goal next slide please as well yes uh, now uh, in trade like julian also spoke about a uh, few points on this most of the uh, kids their first coach is their parents i think i was i am a parent and i know that i started teaching my children uh, how to throw a ball and so parents being their first coach can have a good effect on the athlete on the long term can have a bad uh, effect also you say because the bad effect comes because parents think that the children are owned by them so ownership creates a problem that they will want the kid to do what they think that they can do the but they don't understand that the children are still growing up and certain children are there a little bit slow to learn so we as parents should not get that ownership and push them to a levels because that creates a situation that will the child will not love the sport then they tend to keep away from the sport when they turn 14 15 so mostly certain parents push the ch children to burn out when they are 13 so i think that's also not very good but if the parent sees the long term goal and gives them freedom to uh innovate do their stuff like uh, julian uh, mentioned the gaming industry has picked it up i think the game and gaming industry people know about children than the, their parents so they give that free flow so i think kids get addicted to uh, games than sport because of that so if the parents can do it the other way uh, have the kids enjoy the sport give them freedom to express and do the stuff i think that will uh, create a very good future for the sport uh, especially uh, i know like my son certain sometimes say i can't train today but i okay don't train but go and sit and watch training if you're tired so sometimes he walks into the pool and speaks to the coach and i can see him after 20 minutes he's in the pool uh, swimming so like that you need to give them that freedom to make do their uh, go to their goals and uh, other two motivation methods i think julian touched on it uh, 
mainly uh, extrinsic uh, motivation i think uh, is uh, parents uh, go for these trophies and uh, short term uh, goals uh, and even punishment i have seen uh, i have seen at certain swimming meets that uh, some children becomes uh, first in the heat but the parent is not happy says your timing was slow and like shouting and i have seen athletes in tears so i think uh, parents need to un understand that uh, in rugby sometimes we use also extrinsic motivation in half time by shouting at certain players but i as a practice uh, apologize after the game because uh, it is not very very advice to use that kind of motivation on the long run so as uh, julian said uh, if we can clarify the roles between coaches and parents for optimal athletic benefits like for me uh, if i am the driver of a coach uh, where the athlete is in that coach the parents will be the set of wheels so the parents will have to understand the long term goals of the athlete and they will have to go through that bumpy ride with this coach and the athlete on top so i think it's not a easy task doing it but uh, we need to understand the real roles of how parents can help a athlete Uh, i think if parents go to uh, push the athletes to limits that he doesn't want to go sometimes he will not go to the real goal that he wants to go and uh, that has been a main uh, problem in developing good athletes for the future so the uh, next slide i think uh, is that julian's question do parents uh, know their kids goals so i think uh, julian will speak on this how we want to want the parents to sit with the athlete and have a chat and communicate that to the coaches i think that will help going forward a lot so kasun i think uh, that's a small wrap up but this 3d coaching has changed a lot of uh, things that we were doing traditional ways in sri lanka for the past few years we have been pushing athletes to their limits and we were getting short term goals done through these athletes but i feel that has to change now and uh, it's not going to help their uh, future lives because we have to see them in after 10 15 years that they are having a proper uh, good family uh, good father good husband and a good human being for the society thank you thank you coach shamli go to you coach thank you coach shamli okay now uh, let's let's move on to the uh, q and a session i'll just unmute our speakers julian can you come online please yes sir i'm there ah, okay Hello, dog that's messing up can you see that <laughs> he has to go down okay so i'll uh, first uh, go for a question uh, with the uh, udesh there's a question for you um a clicking sound is coming from my knees when i'm bending my knees please let me know why and how to prevent it actually that kind of sounds in your knee is most probably because of tightness of your knee or surrounding muscles and it's no need to much worry about if you are having if you are with only sounds and no pain at all if you are having pain with this sound you have to more consider on that but if only that sound no need to much consider but better if you can work on your thigh and leg muscles much better if you can stretch properly and especially to foam rolling foam rolling properly each and every day and see how it's going on but you have to continue this one at least for 2 3 weeks and see and if you are having sound with pain better to check with medical professional okay thank you desh 
so the next question is uh, for you as well. Um, so what in your opinion are best ways to prevent shin pains for flat footed athletes who get pains etc on land training or running session as i'm aware it is an issue many flat footed athletes face regardless of the footwear used yes actually if you are having shin splints if you are swimmer but having shin splint it's mainly because of your land training errors or your foot errors maybe congenital errors then when you are doing land training you if you are do i think you are assume you are a senior athlete and if you are doing long distance running for endurance training better to wear proper running shoes if you are running on hard surface and more than 2 kilometers it must first one better to wear proper running shoes and use a arch support because you are flat footed better to use arch support there are lots of places who are making customized arch supports then make a arch support if needed and you have to work on your ankle mobility as well i described you one injury prevention method mobility training mm -hmm. then google and see what are the best ankle mobility drills and do ankle mobility and work on that and release your calf muscles as well it's a key and use a proper shoe proper running shoe and arch support okay thank you udesh uh, for that answer um so we'll go for one more question for this and then we will move on to uh, julian and shamli um i get a low i get lower back pains when i exercise especially when i do squats can you please advise how to recover from the from this pain am i doing the exercise incorrectly to get such a pain i can't say exactly without uh, watching your squatting movement but most probably you may doing it in in a periodic way the thing is first check your action i think uh, coach chain described how to do squats earlier very clearly how to keep your knees you have you have to keep your knees behind your toes and arch your, you have to keep your back straight little bit of arch of your uh, lumbar area and keep your trunk straight if you are doing weights you have to do it correctly if you are doing squats with weights first check your squatting action from a mirror and check with your trainer or uh, your swimming coach and make sure whether you are doing it correctly if it is so, then you have to go for a medical professional or check whether you are having tightness of your uh, back muscles but most probably you may not doing it correctly special technique issue please first check on your technique and work on that Okay, thank you, Desh. Okay, so now I think uh, either Julian or Shamli can I think uh, can answer this. Uh, so basically, uh, this is a child who has an issue. Uh, so she's he's saying he or she is saying. So my dad insists that wearing pins that are heavy makes your legs strong, but honestly, it's hard to swim and I get tired easily. Is my dad correct? um i think technically we can talk about it um if you're bearing a set of zoomers at a young age it can have less flexion less uh, fin area kick so that could be considered a heavier fin uh, my coach in hawaii dr john prince had the best advice when it comes to buying fins you don't need to buy different size fins for different activities is by the regular fin and as time goes along start clipping the corners and shortening the fin so that you can slowly graduate from big fin to a small fin that's the technical side uh, shamli i think the other issue is probably you have a rugby player yeah. <laughs> or yeah, a swimmer I, been yeah. advised by a parent i would like you to answer that i i feel i think the father wants you to go through pain and training so it is like this athletes need to understand like if you train with uh, training really hard i think competition will be fun so some parents might be pushing you all at training to do the hard work and uh, parents 
need to understand also if the child cannot take it then they have to not push them to do it also so that they will not so i don't know how old is that child but uh, if she, yes. she yeah that's of course uh, too early i see so <laughs> after 13 i think training will be hard work but competition should be enjoyment um young swimmer and i would like to ask you whether do you like your father giving you instructions and uh, sometimes you might but uh, i think on the long term if you want to have swimmers stay in the sport your parents an issue uh, that even coaches need to tackle with um parents and swimmers so swimmer if you have an issue and sometimes but dad and mom love you a lot and they, they sometimes mean well but it sometimes does a lot of harm so best is leave coaching in the coach's hands and parents like i said become grandparents uh you know it doesn't matter what fin you wear use him fast thank you um okay sir why can't we do what we want instead our parents have to choose <laughs> Um, I can celebrate here. We all can celebrate. I'll say it in short. This is exactly what today's topic is. It's about you kids who are you are priority. Your I am not your priority. Your parent is not your priority. You are you are the vehicle. Coach Shamli said, "We are here to steer you through." So it has to be your choice. And this is something that we are going to force. educate our parents and force it on our team and other coaches if you want help we are more than happy to help if you can do that it'd be excellent to keep your athletes especially other coaches who are in school teams it's tough to keep athletes in a, in a school setup going into the senior age groups and this is one reason why swimmers quit swimming because parents want it some Ramli sir, do you have any thing to add to that? Uh, no, I think Julian covered everything. Ah, right. Okay, so uh, I think we are done with the questions uh, for today. Uh, so whichever questions which have not been answered, what we will do is we will get back to you. Uh, we will send uh, all the links, and I think even Coach uh, our Udesh also spoke about maybe a few links, maybe which he can send. So we will send those. to you uh, in the future uh, now uh, we would like to go can i interrupt a little bit yes uh, for yes. young young swimmers there's something else we coaches have been told now we hear that you young swimmers have the best of ideas some good ideas so and you all are from different teams and i suggest because we are in lockdown and there is a lot more time that we might have to spend at home like this before we go back into our regular lifestyles is there anything else that you want us to cover down the road maybe not a seven day series but if you have to have a topic once a week would you like that and in, if you would like to have that once a week topic are there certain things that you want us to cover and try and cover so talk to your um, coaches uh, talk to your teammates get to your coach and your coach will get to us and we can probably decide on something uh, Because I think sometimes swimmers have the best of ideas, so come back to fins. You know what I would do? I'll put both sets of fins, the heavy one and the light one, and I'll get the swimmer to use it and say, "Hey, which one feels better?" And I might have the answer. Thank you, Julian sir. Right now, let's uh, move on to the winners from uh, the day six uh, question. Uh, so the winners are for day six. is kimutu korelage hesanya premaratna and tiasha vidanage i i repeat the winners from yesterday are kimutu korelage hesanya premaratna and tiasha vidanage you can collect your gift from glory swim shop in spathodia avenue kalamba 5 please take uh, i think you have given us uh, a certain identification number please take that uh, when you go to pick up the gifts okay now let's move on to the next uh, so today's question so you can answer it now while our guest performer will be performing uh, how many south asian games gold medals have julian bowling won i mentioned this in the beginning when i was introducing him uh, how many south asian games gold medals have julian bowling won 
So it's uh, a number which you have to just put in. So put in your name, uh, put in your parents' ID number, and then the answer. Again, put in your name, and then your parents' ID number, and then your answer. So three uh, winners will be chosen, and they will be announced after the guest performance. Okay, now to the most exciting part of uh, today's, <laughs> uh, today's uh, session. Um, now I would like to introduce our special guest, uh, the musical leg legend, Mr. Bhatia Jaikodi, to perform a few songs for us. Let's give him a big swimmer's welcome. Hi, uh, hi everybody. I actually I was there on your, uh, you know, MS series. I could hear certain things. I was not there for the whole thing, but then I heard a few things that you guys were speaking of. It's uh, great to see how when people cannot do sport, also people are so enthusiastic about sport and still keep pushing themselves. So it's a, it's a, it's a really great thing to see because I uh, usually get to uh, speak to a lot of, uh, you know, uh, say a lot of corporate uh, groups and then a lot of groups in terms of, you know, uh, school associations and creative groups. So this is the first time that I have come to a, you know, athletes group. So I feel a little bit, <laughs> bit <laughs> intimidated as well because I am not a great athlete, uh, <laughs> though I'd like to think that way. <laughs> So here we go. I was told that, I, you know, you guys, uh, you know, there are three songs that you guys like. So I'll start with one of those and uh, then I'll go on to the other two as well. So this is Unmadri Hanguna from our, you know, old album. I think you guys can hear this clearly. Yes. 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 We can hear you, Bhatia. Thank you. I'm going to do a little bit of everything because otherwise three songs will be really long. Imadini Anguna Anuraga Simbala Suguru Sukhin Lochana Say no day, Diana. next one i think this is uh, julian's favorite i was told by some of your team is that true is he there julian 
Yeah, he's here. And good day, buddy. Thank you so much. Okay, so I was told that you really, you know, uh, you know, his song is your favorite song. So I'm going to do that. I like the song, but when you sing it, it becomes the best. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm just going to do a part of that as well. I'm not going to do the full songs because it'll be too long. So here we go, Master Sir. On this one, I'll have to scream it out a little bit. Oh man, I'm gonna be dancing all night. Thank you, Bhatia. Thank you, thank you so much, Julian. And I was going to do one more journey with us. <laughs> and these kids are all precious, and uh, I know how you love them. And yep, thank you so much for taking time out and thank entertaining you. us. Thank you very much. So I'm just gonna do one last one because I was asked to do three, and you know by whom. And if I don't do it, you know I'll get into trouble. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so I said, you know, I usually I'll do two, but then she said, no, you need to do two, three, very specially for rainbow. So I said, okay. Bravo. <laughs> so I was told to do app, have a solo, okay, but then if there are any other songs that you guys would like, any other other option, I can do that as well. Is there any other option? You know, you can I just. That, there was a request of Siri Sangabodi. Siri Sangabodhi, okay. Yeah. Siri Sangabodhi is one. And then? Siri Sangabodhi is one, okay. Hangitimu Sri Lanka. I think that I won't do because that's all over the place at the moment. That's that's all over social media and a lot of things. Okay, I'll sing a song that... Ah, okay. Raga Tala Patalaga. We'll all sing it together. Because everybody can sing that, so I'm just going to do that. Okay, so here we go. So everybody sing that with me and uh, so here we go, I'm just going to type it on my, okay, here we go, okay. So everybody knows this, you guys can sing along from home. They're going to do a fun song and end this session. 
Even the small ones can say this. I can see the smiles of everybody. Keep on saying. Ragatale patale gatte gita lo makale me gatte bai lagamu the remix karala. Baila gamu the remix karala. Baila gamu the remix karala. I want to see all of your scenes. Hey, I get mercy na. Take na maaf aur bala. Yaal paan meinge na wo pitch mala para bala. Jaaye to paaye na, koye daat ek bala. Bas na ke dua baar aata. Baila gamu the remix karala. Baila gamu the remix karala. Bin malu wale kusala malu ban na chakiya. Roka and na chop si na takala na na me koya. Jeevi the mal kiya la kiya la kiwa rock pella. Kada puliya hatu nu mali. Baila gamu the remix karala. I can see kids dancing. Baila gamu the remix karala. Rakatale patale gat se gita lo makale me gat se bai laga mudari mix karala bai laga mudari mix karala bai laga mudari mix karala. I want to see everybody put their hands up. Come on, put your hands up. Ah, very good. This is fantastic. This is the first time I've seen everybody doing this. मलिया Maatis and net no piya, balang hitiya nangila, suwad piya malang adar. Bai laga mudhe remix karala, bai laga mudhe remix karala. I want everybody to sing along. Sing. Lagata lama to lagat se gita lo makala maga. Bai laga mudhe remix karala, bai laga mudhe remix karala, bai laga mudhe remix karala. All right, now we're going into the last chorus. I want to see everybody clapping and singing with me. The last one, okay? Everybody clap and sing. Ragatale patale gat se gita lo, magala magat se bai laga mudari mix karala. Bai laga mudari mix karala. Bai laga mudari mix karala. Thank you very much, guys, for having me on your forum today. And I think this was the most most energetic Zoom forum I've been to. I've been to Zoom forums with like about five, six hundred people, but then this is the first time I saw this many kids. And it's beautiful to see all you young people here and the young, you know, blood here. And it's beautiful to see all of you all dancing, waving your hands. Thank you so much for having me there, and I really enjoyed this session as well. Thank you very much, uh, Bharti, for that. I'm sure uh, yeah, everyone brother. enjoyed it. I think uh, Julian wants to say something. I just said, "Bless you, brother. You are awesome. Thank you so, so much. That's it, man. Good to see you." Thank you, then. All right, guys. Take care. Be safe. I'll see you soon. Yes. Thank you. Thanks again, Bhati. Okay, guys. Um, so, big shout out to Bhati for uh, coming and entertaining us. It was a short but a very entertaining segment, right? now uh, i will like i would like to announce uh, the the winners of today's uh, question um, so we have amrita vijayanath amrita vijayanath and then we have satvi arjuna satvi arjuna and then we have ivan de silva we have ivan de silva i will mention their names again amrita vijayanath amrita vijayanath satvi arjuna arjuna or arjuna and then ivan de silva so you can collect your gifts uh, from uh, glory swim shop uh, you just take your identification uh, while you go there okay um julian sir 
is there i think julian sir is stuck some reason oh, i'm here can you hear me my video is frozen but is my voice being heard yes we can hear your voice well that's good enough because all the good looking coaches are online um guys so i think thank you so much all parents um all swimmers um from okay i'm going to mention those great schools ladies college st peter's college with the lyceum vatsala got bisaka vidyalaya and we got stafford international school we got colombo international school we got moya international school and other listeners from i wouldn't say around the globe but for sure from india and coaches and parents and swimmers from india and as well as the middle east thank you so much for joining in and being part of this journey for us it's an honor to serve you all and we look forward to maybe maybe if you all can discuss as coaches swimmers speak with the relevant coaches to do a weekly um, webinar or a zoom chat and cover some topic uh, but dear parents like you said please let's um, let's ask kids what they want and they will come with the most beautiful 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 story the dream that they have and mom dad and us coaches we will help that you young children achieve those dreams of your life and have a lot of fun while doing it thank you thank you julian sir uh, so uh, just before we wrap up i'll just have to mention a few things uh, i'd like to thank everyone for being with us during the last week um, swimmers parents have been with us i think we have a few coaches as well so i would like to thank them for being with us um i would like to thank our sponsors sustigen school 6 plus and sustigen and glory swim shop i would like to thank the big team behind the scenes and you know who you are so uh, there was a big team behind this uh, without that this wouldn't have been possible and i would like to thank coach julian for his encouragement and his support and his guiding words uh, to help us with this with the knowledge series and the biggest thank you goes out to you to all the swimmers and the parents for joining us on a frequent basis for the last 7 to 8 days uh, to make this a success so as julian sir said if you have any ideas please let us know and then we can see how we can help you so all the best we hope to see everyone back in the pool as soon as possible i mean everyone is looking forward to that so hopefully that will happen soon and then uh, we'll see you and we'll get back to will maybe make use of what we learned during the last seven sessions thank you very much have a pleasant evening good night bye